All right, welcome back. The show is interactive. It, hashtag is Breakfast Daily. The WhatsApp line is 0550 We do want to hear from you. And some messages have already come through. Let me just quickly read them. Uh, so this is, good morning. I am Bismarck from Sapiman. I love this show. Thank you very much, Bismarck. Mm -hmm. Keep watching and invite others, others of your friends to also tell them about the Breakfast Daily Show on City TV. This one says, good morning, City. Good morning, David. I am, um, I'm okay. Uh, please tell her, that's Kokui, not to get it wrong. The quote of the day is not about someone telling you something new about yourself. It's about the person opening up new things to you in a way that you actually didn't know. Okay? Uh, it's an awakening. I'm BB. All right, Bibi, hmm. thank you. Thank you for Please, this message. Bibi, that is good, not what the quote said. It's a good clarification. No, no, you the see. The quote said, no, he's, love uh -huh, is uh -huh. some, somebody <clears throat> telling you something new about yourself. Thank you. So it's that's about what the, so opening. Don't, Bibi, no, don't see, come and I'll say, no. and you open the new experience yeah. of the experience. Yeah, but that's what it Please. is. No, you've that's now embellished the quote no, to try to make no, it work. You see, every quote, they you have to try and understand the quote. Why is she trying to embellish the quote? No, you have to understand the quote. There's no understanding. Because no. The quotes, so they're saying, oh, the are reading, love, no. They are reading it on the surface. Oh, BMU, BMU, nothing kind of woman, no. Uh-huh, not yet. Yeah. yeah. So love has <clears> passed <throat> your face front. So, yeah. so you, you are seen underneath quotes. Oh, yeah. Uh, quick, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This quotes, dear. I'm not saying... Do you like, by the way, is, by the way, do you like Oreos? Oreos? Yeah, Oreos are nice. Okay. Why? All right. No, it's okay. You will discuss this off air. Okay. Mm. That, that was very random. Yes, I know. But the fact of the matter is, mm -hmm. yeah, the quote is okay, but I just don't agree that that is love. Because the, the quote says, love is when somebody Bibi, tells you something we, we new like about yourself. Love. Bibi, we like the quote. We like love. Thank you very much for saying that. Anyone message. can tell you something new about yourself. She says, opening up new things to you about yourself that you didn't <sighs> know. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's open up something old <laughs> the u-tag strike which, i know right <laughs> from what we're hearing mm. or what we're being told technically mm -hmm. is suspended yep all right so the national labor commission they went back to court and the courts have spoken yep and the courts they have say spoken. you tag you have to go back to the classroom yep. until mm. you and the nlc mm. come to an agreement on this but while you are still in negotiation you cannot go on strike Okay. Yeah. So there's been a lot of back and which forth. Which is actually what the law says. Which, which is what the law says. Yeah. But UTAG, were, they, were, they were kind of digging their heels in, yeah. you know, and saying that, well, I'm sorry, we've, mm. we've tried to negotiate with you guys before. You made us promises. You didn't keep them. So we will not listen. But mm. now the courts have spoken. Yeah. The UTAG has to listen to the court. Yeah. Right? At least. So negotiations mm. can continue yeah. while they're still in the classroom. Yeah, yeah. But what does this mean, Kweku David? Because we know, you know, we've had we've spoken to some of our colleagues in, mm. in other parts of the country, even here in Accra, students who were on campus, on campus yeah. in, in dormitories mm. or in halls there mm. Mm. started going home. Yeah. How, because you're sitting no, but you for see, a month so, with so, no so classes, quickly, nothing. I like I I mean I shared early early you know, earlier, maybe two weeks ago or so, about what I've experienced myself on campus. And, you know, the funny thing is that you, you never know when it's going to end. And that's the challenge. So for some people, um, you know, as soon as it's, it started, they said, you know what, next plane, I'm off. And they went, yes, they went to the UK. And they were laughing at us because... Let's As see. the months dragged on and we're still, on, you know, not coming back to school. Because yours was like nine months or something, It was right? nine months, right? So then it was like, like a, just, a great justification. We lost a whole for, year. You know, exactly, for it happening. And so, yes, so, I mean, I think that it's important for, um, you know, the, the, the discussions between government and UTAG to conclude as soon as possible. Because, yes, it is frustrating for students, you know. You don't know if, as soon as you get home, you're going to say, come back. Exactly. You know, and, and, and all of that. And some people are like, you know what, let's just sit here and wait, you know, and see what happens. But mm -hmm. we have a report for you from our colleague, Ni Ayukwe, and um, just basically given an understanding of what has happened from the, the courts sitting and the ruling that they gave. 
The University Teachers Association of Ghana, UTAG, has been on strike since January 10, 2022, in demand for the restoration of the conditions of service agreed upon with the government in 2012, which pegged the basic plus market premium of Electra at $2,000. According to UTAG, the current arrangement has reduced its members' basic premiums to $900. The National Labor Commission, NLC, dragged UTAC to court after attempts to have UTAC call off its strike failed. The court ordered both parties to adopt an out-of-court settlement for the second time, but the engagement ended inconclusively. During proceedings on Tuesday, February 15, counsel for the NLC appealed to the court for an interlocutory injunction against the action by UTAG before the hearing of its substantive case seeking an enforcement of its order to the teacher association to call off its industrial action. Meanwhile, counsel for the respondent, UTAG, Kwesi Kelly De Lata, objected to the motion and pleaded with the court to deal with the substantive matter before it. But in his ruling, his lordship Roxen Abuadre said the negotiations between both parties would not yield the needed resource if the strike persisted and thus granted the injunction. The lawyer for UTAG, Kwesi Kelly Delata, spoke to journalists after proceedings. The main motion which is seeking to enforce the directors of the National Labor Commission should have been heard first, but the judge thought otherwise and decided that the injunction application should be heard first. And the outcome of that application is all to your witness in court today. Uh, the judge decided to grant the interlocutory injunction application. We are going to study uh, the order and, and advise our clients accordingly. And I wish to remind you that the main motion, which is seeking to enforce the directors of the commission, is still before the court. The hearing of that application has been adjourned to the 22nd. Uh, so on the 22nd, we'll be back in court for the main motion to be heard. And let me repeat that that main motion is seeking to enforce the directives of the commission. And the directive of the commission is that UTAC should um, go back to the classroom because the strike they have declared is illegal. So arguments will be heard on that. We'll look forward to that with beta breath. And we're very confident that uh, our arguments will sway the day, yes. The Executive Secretary of the National Labor Commission, Ofusua Samwa, urged UTAC to return to the negotiation table for an amicable resolution of their concerns. Strike is a tool for any um, union right, to press home its demand. right. But in the same way, when there is a strike during negotiation, it brings an undue influence right, on the other party as well. Yes, they've been on strike for some time. We all have known that, yes. And I think uh, the courts have taken notice that it is enough time to press home their demand or to inform them. I mean, the pain that has been suffered by the other party and the Ghanaians as a whole is enough. Yes, so let's go on and negotiate. After all, it's just the leadership of about 16 that are negotiating. And there are about 5,000 and over lectures can also be in the lecture hall. How many of them are in court today? It's just the leadership. So life must still go on. They will not be weak in any way. They can still argue, negotiate, and get what they want. While expressing their excitement at the ruling, the University Students Association of Ghana, USAG, also bemoaned the impact of the five-week-long strike on the academics of students. The, the impact has been very huge and devastating. No academic work has been going on for the past five, almost six weeks. And so if you come to our various campuses, you do not find students engaged in any activity. And you see, the sad thing is that this strike actually began at the beginning of the academic calendar. No work had already been done earlier. So if maybe it happened uh, in the middle of the semester, you would say that maybe some form of academic work had already taken place. And so students had the time to revise or they've been given assignments that they could use this period to do. And so the impact has been very huge. Look at even level 100 students who had come in no sense of orientation they do not know the places they have to go they don't know their left from their right international students who have heard of ghana and how best our education system is who have paid huge sums of money to be in our country and then they've been here for over five weeks and they have not been given any academic um, tutorials and so the impact has been very huge and we hope that the period left in the academic calendar we all would contribute when i say we all students lecturers 
university management do our best so that we can end the academic calendar on a good note. Proceedings have thus been adjourned to February 22, 2022 at 1.30 p.m. All right, so February 22nd, that is when we will revisit this case, mm. well, UTAG versus the NLC. Mm. Now, in that span of a week, we have to see what happens. Our lecturers back mm. on campus this morning will be touching base with some of our fellow correspondents across the country to see what the situation is at various campuses across Ghana, to see where the lecturers are back, where the classes are starting, and where the students are even there. Because, <laughs> be <laughs> you know, because this thing dragged... Mm. By Foreign students, yeah. if you're from a neighboring African country, yeah. what do you do? Yeah. do you, you know, and there's some students on exchange programs. Ex you know, all what, of those. Yeah. What happens yeah. to those yeah. students? Yeah. And Even KNUSC those, in particular does a lot of exchange programs as well. You know, you it's, know with it's, some universities in Canada, in the US, and so on. You know, so people are always coming yeah. across. So it's, it's, a, it's a tough situation. It is. I mean, the education ministry is saying something interesting here. Mm -hmm. It says that court's, court's order for UTAG to call off strike is progressive. It's coming from education ministry and they mm. say that well it says here the story says here on citynewsroom.com says the education ministry believes that the court order for this for striking public university lecturers to return to the classrooms is progressive and affords government the opportunity to properly engage the lecturers on their demands mm. now, i'm wondering why they could not properly engage them if it was hmm. strike. Um, according to the ministry's public relations officer, Kwesi Kwating, the ministry is hoping that a lasting solution will be found and lecturers permanently returning to their lecture rooms. Speaking of eyewitness news, he said the ruling of the court is in the right direction as Ghana's labor laws are explicitly against an aggrieved party being on strike while negotiations are ongoing. Hmm. For us, and I quote, we find it a bit progressive, the decision by the court that, the, that granted the injunction re, uh, relief, which was being sought by the National Labor Commission, because in the end, parties will have to get back to negotiations and our laws, the laws of our land are very clear. It is clear that hmm. you are unable to negotiate when you are on strike, he said. And then the story goes on there. You can go on to citynewsroom.com and read further. Meanwhile, Dr. Yeah. Clementa Park, mm -hmm. who is a deputy ranking member on the Education Committee in Parliament and also the member of Parliament for Bilsa South, spoke to our very own Maru Sanda on uh, Face to Face it's on City TV. Okay. Now, he says the strike is justified and mm. government is to blame for this prolonged hey. action. So he's insisting that UTAG is right to mm. not to return to the lecture halls until their demands are met. Mm. He says the decision of the union not to call off the six-week-old industrial action is born out of the bad faith exhibited by the government mm. in the past over similar concerns about conditions of service in previous years. He blames the government for the prolonged impasse. He says it continues to have a negative impact on students in tertiary institutions nationwide. He says UTAG has no faith in the current arrangements and the persons they're dealing with. He says they do not believe that if they call off the strike, the demands will be met based on history. For UTAG, this is a quote, it's do or die. Mm. If they're going to succeed in getting what they want and the state can do whatever they want, and they have said that if the government wants to sack all of them, they are willing to be sacked. Now let's see if the ministers can go to the lecture halls and teach. This is wow. what he's saying. That UTAG is ready to, again, dig in their heels and see this through because they, they feel that in the past government has not honored their end of the bargain and they're tired of it and they're going to stick this but out i wonder until... if that's a, a very good position to take <sighs> because there's a there's negotiations means you're willing to give and take but in the past you have yeah and you you still yeah. haven't you Received know had the your end of the deal no. okay but, but in well, all of this the students are the ones who suffer yeah, as well yeah you absolutely know? Wow. Absolutely. Okay. So our, our colleague, we're going to go to Kumase and uh, we're going to have uh, a, a view of what's happening on campus at KNUSD. Um, Edward Opomafo is there to bring us some, you know, footage and uh, news of what's going on there. Hopefully we'll be able to talk to some students as well. Edward, good morning. Uh, good morning, Kweku. How are you doing? Well, I'm great this morning. I hope you're fine. I'm very good, thank you. And KNUSD, how's how's things on campus this morning? 
Well, Ken Westy, it looks deserted in a way. Uh, when you go to the lecture halls, they are still locked. Uh, when you get to some of the busy areas, like the commercial area, um, like the popular Mecca Road, yes, all these places, you, you, you won't find people. This is and a, when you come you to front where of I am Republic at the Hall, moment. Right? Yes, I'm okay. in front of the Republic Hall. All right. And so here at the Republic Hall, and it's also just closer to the Royal Parade Grounds, it's actually one of the most busy areas on campus. Mm. But here there are just a few of the students that you see around. And for all your continuing students, most of them are not on campus mm. at, at the moment. And some of the first years who are here at the moment, they have been telling us that some, they decide to go home and then they return, they go home and they return. Some to have been here throughout. So basically that's how it has been. And so we're here basically to find out from the few of the students who are around to really um, know how they feel now okay. uh, since uh, the lecturers have been asked to uh, come back to um, the classroom. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, we'll, we'll get to some of the uh, some of them right away. Okay. Um, so we have a young lady here. Uh, what's your name? Nanikia. Right. So Nanikia, which year are you? Year one. Uh, mm -hmm. First year. Yes. And so when did you arrive on campus? I came. The very first day they asked us to come, but I left and went to my just came this morning. Okay, so it means the first day that you were asked to come, which was the 8th of January. Yes, please. So since 8th of January, you have been here after you were done with your registration. Then just two days after you came, the lectures began the strike. That's on the 10th of January. Yes. How has it been within this period? It's been rough because I had to go because I wouldn't do anything in school. And then I even have roommates who live far away. I have one roommate who lives at home. She also had to go home. So it's a kind of transport money. Actually, it was good because she came to do her registration, but she had to go back home. Then we thought by now we have started lectures and we didn't have to do mid semester or something, but we are still at home. So I would like to please the government so that they will solve the lecturers. They give them what they want so that they can please come back and teach us. And I'm sure you have been following the issues. Now your lecturers have been asked to return to their classrooms. Is that the reason why you decided to come this morning? Yes, hoping they would come back. If they don't, I have to go back home. Okay, so you're actually hoping to attend uh, lectures this morning? Not this morning, I'm not sure. I know they are not going to come this morning. So I'm just hoping maybe Monday or something they come. All right, but where exactly do you stay? I stay at our muscle. I won't mass so. All right, okay. But within this period, how's it feeling like? How's it been for you? I've been home, so I really don't have any experience on campus buying and all those things. I've been at home this whole time. All right, so thank you very much. What's your name? Nanik, yeah. Right, so uh, we'll also try engaging some other people as well to, to find out um, how it has been for them so, so far. And so there's one other young man who is joining me here. Um, what's your name? I'm Caleb Isaiah. Caleb? Yeah, Caleb. All right, so Caleb, uh, which year are you? Level 100. So first year. Yes. And so for first year, I'm sure yours will just be like what a young lady said. Yeah. You're feeling, but just describe it yourself. How has it been? Oh, it's it been a little disheartening because I had a lot of plans, a lot of shadows, but unfortunately I can only fulfill half of it. That's my extracurricular activities and a few gym and exercises. I plan to come and study and do some other stuff, but lectures are not coming. And as we heard yesterday, this, the Utah told them to come back, but... That's when they went to court. Yeah, when they went to court yesterday, yes. to come back, but we're not hearing anything. They've not responded, so we are very disheartened. But have you been on campus throughout? Yeah, I've been on campus throughout. I came on the 12th of January, yeah, and I've been on campus throughout. Okay, so you came when the UTAC members had even de uh, declared the strike. Okay. Yes, yes. Right, so this period you've been here, have you been spending, because some people we spoke to earlier they were telling us that they have been spending a lot on campus and their parents even asked them to come. How was your situation? It's the same. I've been spending a lot actually. And my parents also asked me to come back. But I, I told them that if I go back, and let's say the next day they tell us to come back, it's be a waste of money again. So that, that's the reason why I'm still on campus. Yeah. Okay. But now your lecturers have been asked to return. Yeah. Is the feeling somehow positive for you? Well, they've not responded, so I can't say it's positive. I'm, I'm, not, I'm still feeling the same. I don't think, because they told them that last two weeks, 
but nothing happened. So we just have to hope and see what will happen. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much. But what, what program are you offering? Agriculture Biotechnology. A and have you been meeting with your, uh, uh, your TAs and uh, other people? Yes, yes. We've even formed groups on WhatsApp to help each other study. And even today we have an algebra meeting on Zoom. Yes. Okay, so in a way you have started studying, although your lecturers have not uh, started teaching you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so it's basically on Zoom or you meet physically as well? Just on social media, WhatsApp and Zoom. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. But if there's any word that you would like to put out there to the government, to all other stakeholders, to ensure that this issue is addressed once and for all, what exactly would you say? Well, I'm pleading to the government to help solve this issue because I know there's something they can do. So it's, we plead with them to do it because we've been, we spent our time here, we've wasted some of our time, our resources, our money, and it's really bad. It should help us. We're pleading with them. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, so well, I'll engage the very last person mm -hmm. uh, to also find out from him how it has been here. Um, young man, good, good morning. Morning. Right, so what, what, what's your name? I'm Pagusi Misa. Right. Um, which year are you? First year. Good. Well, which of the halls are you residing? In this hall. Independence Hall. Um, tell us, um, what's your story like within this period? Mm, it's, it's been boring. Like, I just stay inside, study small, watch movies, sleep, wake up the following morning, repeat. <laughs> and so today, your lectures um, were supposed to come, although you have not heard from them as a position as to when they are really returning to the classrooms. W what's going on in your mind? I heard they've postponed the court uh, ruling on to 22nd February, so I don't know. I feel like I have to go home. But at the moment, there's an, they have granted an injunction and that per the ruling, the lectures are supposed to come, although their position where you have to really get to know when exactly you're supposed to come. So you, you feel that even though the injunction has been granted, you are considering going home? Yeah. How am I really going home? Because I don't know. I don't feel like staying again because I don't think the lectures are ready to come. They're ready to come. So I feel like going home. So I'm going home. Well, it, it, it looks like you, you feel a bit disappointed. You're a first year student, you wanted to enjoy how it feels like to be in the university and you're not really getting it. Is that the feeling? Yeah, because I stayed here for like the first ruling, the first court case, second court case, hoping they will come. They've postponed it and I don't think they are coming, so I just have to go. Uh, uh, where exactly are you from? Accra. Okay. All right. But is there anything you like authorities to do to help address this? Yeah, I know they can address this issue, but I don't know why they are, they are taking so much time. I know this, this will be resolved, but it's just a matter of time. So I just pray they just do it fast so that we can come to school and come and learn. That's all. Well, some people I spoke to earlier um, indicated that they have some Zoom meetings, they study on WhatsApp platforms and all that. How has your uh, case been? Yeah, we have Zoom meetings. Sometimes we meet at the parade grounds. Yeah, and sometimes to behind Africa Hall, like we do some tutorials and all that. So yeah, like we do, we do have tutorials on some of the the, the courses. And so, who has been taking you through these ones? Um, like the senior course mates, I have like two. I have um, Faf, he's a friend called Felix. I have Ransford, yeah, and Asante Ahmed. Like they are senior course mates who help who help us. But uh, the teaching assistants have they started engaging you in a way? Mm, no. It's just like the senior course me too are like willing to help us, to help us. And so far, have you had any form of personal contact with any of your lecturers? That's either in person or maybe you talking to them on phone? I've not even seen one. I've not seen one. Maybe I maybe the person working is a lecturer, but I I, I wouldn't know. So I would say that I've not seen one. Yeah. What program are you offering? Yes, I agree business. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, Kukri and mm. David, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's the situation mm. here. Uh, basically, all the three people we spoke to are first-year students. And yeah. um, for them, it looks very disappointing because uh, they have not really had a feel of how it, it feels like yes, for a lecturer to be um, in front of you, take you through the courses and all that. So, mm. they, they look very disappointed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Edward, thank you very much. We appreciate your time this morning. Thank you very much. Thanks, Edward. All right. Okay, so wow. um, and you know, the students. I mean, 
you, you also don't get the sense that they're very hopeful about even this latest yeah. development, yeah. you yeah. know. Yeah. Maybe the girl, Nanikria, they spoke mm. to, she sounded like, okay, she's going to stick around a bit and she's hoping that yeah. maybe by Monday she'll see her lectures. But, but she lives in she, Kumasi. She lives in uh, so it's so easier it's for her. Different. Yeah, yeah it's a bit but different. But they... You didn't get that sense that they feel that there's going to be some yeah. good news progress mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. any lecturer will turn up anytime yeah. soon. No, mm -hmm. and, 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 and for somebody who's in first year, it's particularly yeah. difficult, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, my experience, I was actually in first year when it, when it oh, happened. Gosh. Oh, gosh. Yeah, so oh. it's, 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 it's harrowing. So you finish <laughs> your secondary yeah. school, you're excited yeah. about yeah. becoming a uni yeah, student, uni you students, know, yeah. and the first nine months, months nothing. Yeah. Actually, ours was even worse than that because there was an initial three months. Then we came to school for four months and then the nine months began. Oh, gosh. Yeah, and then nine months so began. So altogether a year? Yeah. And We were supposed to have gone to school in October. Yeah. We, we only came to school in January. January. And then by April 22nd or so, it was off again. began and then nine months straight. And that just kills yeah. your momentum. Yeah, yeah, yeah everything. 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 Even your desire to no, learn. No, 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 I mean, no. It just takes everything away. <laughs> you I mean, just... Yeah. Oh, goodness me. Happens. I also wonder about final year students, because mm. this is supposed to be your concluding year where, you know, you it finish up. It must be worse for final year I, students. I, I would imagine. It I must mean, be worse for final year students. This is yeah. the year that yeah. you're going to embark. Either you're going to be preparing mm. to go for postgraduate mm -hmm. or maybe trying to get into some kind of employment where yeah. you need that degree yes. and, and all of the, the criteria that comes with that. Yes. And this kind of interruption and disruption mm. must be very hard to deal with, not to mention the money. Well, the finances, fees well, that have been paid, yeah. expense of living there, yeah. you know, yeah. not knowing what tomorrow will bring, yeah. you know, and no, the psychological it's aspect. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. No, okay. so, I mean, for, for us, when, you know, we're on campus, they, and I mean, I experienced a strike twice mm -hmm. in my period in uni. Um, of course, initially, the first one was when I was at Legon. Then I, you know, went to tech to... Um, doing my degree there um, and then we had a, f a few short months there too um, but I think that the, the the sense of emptiness you know and mm -hmm. not knowing when this is going to end is very very powerful mm -hmm. you know and it it demoralizes you. You just don't. I can imagine. It's like, what am I doing? Let me find yeah. something else to do with my life. Because exactly. Honestly, this is just not, you know, going anywhere. And it's not a good. It's not a good time of your life for this to happen. No. This is, you, you know, know it's not a good time either of your late life teens or early twenties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. it's a new chapter you're embarking on. You're full on. of hope. You're full of hope. You know, and, you know, and then and then they crush it right at the beginning. Oh. Where you're full of hope. Hmm. Before you, you know. even had a Before, chance yes. to hope. Yes. Your hopes yes. are dashed. Yes. All right. Well, we'll be speaking with the national president of UTAC, mm. Professor Solomon Nunu. Mm. Um, we'll ask him about his thoughts mm. on the injunction and uh, whether or not he he's optimistic about what will come out of the negotiations mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. UTAC. Yeah. And the Labour Commission, yeah. and whether or not lecturers will be going back to the classroom mm -hmm. as they've been directed to do. Yeah. So he'll be joining us on Zoom, um, Professor Nunu. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast Daily, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. All right, let's let's get into it, shall we? So, go back to the classroom. This is what we understand. UTAG has been told and that you're to go back to the negotiating table with the Labour Commission as well. Now, since yesterday, what has been UTAG's response? What, 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 what are you thinking about the court ruling? Are you going back to the classroom? And are you looking forward to actually progressing with these negotiations? Yes, um, negotiations um, have stalled for some time now. So currently, we are actually um, we're not too happy with the declaration that came um, but we are actually waiting for the uh, writer that is basically the orders of the court we are waiting for the certified copies so that we can also uh, work with that actually um, I, i'm told whenever such orders are given they need to stay specifically what is that the uh, the confines of the order so once we receive it, uh, we'll be able to then get an interpretation from our legal team and then we make uh, the next move. So yes, uh, going back to the classroom is highly on the table, but we want to see exactly what the orders are stating. 
So uh, how soon do you think we could see lectures back in the classroom? Um, I believe these orders uh, should be available by the close of day today, so we can quickly sit and then have a look at it. Tomorrow also we have a scheduled meeting with the Parliamentary Salary Committee on Education at 11 a.m. So we believe with all of these coming together, it will help us to make an informed decision and then we move from there. So hopefully uh, Monday lectures could begin? That's a possibility. Okay. That's a possibility. Mm. But it all depends on what exactly the others say and also what we hear from the parliamentary select. Okay. Mm. Prof, now, uh, okay. sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Just talk us through and, and remind us again of exactly what your grievances are and why you say you don't have faith in, in government meeting or fulfilling those obligations. So it has to be do with issues of our conditions of service. So conditions of service uh, has deteriorated for UTAG members over the years. And uh, we've been at the table negotiating conditions of service since 2018. So this has been going on for a while now. In 2019, uh, the employer decided to conduct labor market survey in order to take a good look at the market premium allowance. In fact, in 2013, the market premium of university teachers were frozen. And uh, that was done per a government white paper that was released in April 2013. So per that one, the market premium allowance that used to be 140% of the basic salary today has deteriorated to 48% uh, uh, of our basic salary. So you'll notice that there's been a gradual decline and our projections indicate that if nothing is done about it in the next 15 to 20 years, it will run down to um, nearly zero. So this is something that needs to be done as quickly as possible. So what we are asking of is that um, 2014 government conducted labor market survey whose results were never implemented. And also 2019 has been conducted and we are not too sure of when it's going to be implemented. So all we are asking of the employer is to restore us to the 20 and 12 levels, uh, which is the 114% of our basic salary in 2022. Mm -hmm. Once that is done, they can take their time and do the implementation if they have any intention of doing so. So, so basically, that is what has brought us to the point. So in essence, you're not saying that uh, pay us our money now. You are saying restore the conditions and we are good to go. That is all we are saying. I hmm. see. And why do you think government is resistant to that? Or they, they still, thus far, has not been able to fulfill that? Um, that would be difficult for me to answer. I, I think um, there are paid <laughs> operatives of the government whose job it is to get some of these things um, resolved. So um, it would be good if we ask it to the appropriate person. For me, it's, it would just be a conjecture, and I may be wrong in whatever I say. Mm, but I, you have your suspicions, I suppose. But you might not, <laughs> yes, might not want to say that can be big public. <laughs> but you can. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, the impact on students. Obviously, you know, I, I, I don't think any lecturer wants to be away from the classroom, particularly for this long, particularly for the, the beginning of a, a school year, for new students, etc. But have any of you, have your colleagues been remotely trying to assist these students? You know, what's the sentiment amongst your fellow lecturers about the impact that this is having on the students? Surely you empathize with them, even though at the same time you're trying to do what's best for your members as well. Yes, the empathy is there, um, but unfortunately lecturing has halted for those periods. So there's no lecturing going on at the moment. But other services are available. Uh, we've been in the offices, <clears throat> like, sorry, I'm a dean, so mostly I'm in the office Mondays, Tuesdays, to attend to the students and their needs. And besides that also, you have uh, students, those doing their research, research is actively going on. So someone working on the long essay, it's likely that you go and the person may be seeing them. Uh, supervisor to assist the person. So these ones are going uh, on. There's the lecturing that has ceased uh, since the 10th of January. Besides the lecturing, the others are actually ongoing. Mm. So that's just how far the engagement has been. Mm. Mm. And how, how far are you willing to take this or to go with this? We understand that 
obviously, you know, the, the injunction the injunction has been, should we say, declared. But after a certain number of days, it's going to be shut down officially. How far is UTAG willing to take this strike if your conditions are still not met? Okay, currently, as I stated earlier on, um, we need to see the orders of the court, the certified orders for us to uh, look at our options. So um, this new uh, order of the court uh, is bringing in a new dimension that we have to study and make appropriate decisions. But before the orders came in, we were willing to go as long as possible. But currently, with the orders coming in, we need to evaluate it, be sure that everything is still within the legal remits and we are not going overboard. So for now, until we are able to study this document to tell exactly what the document says, it's difficult to answer if we are going uh, uh, the long haul or not, because it's something I cannot tell as of now, because mm -hmm. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a legal mind, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's important I get that explanation from our lawyers, then we take that decision. Mm -hmm. But um, before then, UTAG was willing to stretch this matter to go as far as we could. So that is what um, the whole intention was right from day one. Prof. Nunu, um, in 83, there was a nine-month strike. Uh, in 95, there was also a nine-month strike. Are you really willing to go all the way to, to that length and maybe even beyond if government doesn't, you know, respond appropriately? You see, when you tag embarked on the strike action, we, the leaders, never thought that we would last beyond one week because we thought mm -hmm. that our request is a simple one mm. that uh, should have been addressed as quickly as possible. Yeah. But unfortunately, there's been some sort of feed dragging at this point, which has made it impossible for us to uh, arrive at a decision or to come to a consensus. Hmm. So that is what has caused us to drag on for this long. Yeah. Otherwise, this is not an issue that we believe should have lasted for how long it has lasted. Yeah. And we use the start of the semester because for us, in our mind, we thought that the first week of the semester is always used for registration and yes. then uh, orientation, those things. So even if, if you use that week for that, everything restores back to normal mm. the moment your issues are addressed. Unfortunately, there was no engagement for us to see an addressing of the issues. Yeah. Mm. So yes, the intention from day one wasn't like this. Mm. But now this is where we find ourselves. And the only um, thing that we could do at the time was to continue uh, with the strike action, which we have done up to this point. Yeah. So assuming um, everything goes well according to, um, you know, the court order, you sitting down, talking with members and everything else, reviewing the, doc the document and all that, everything goes well. And let's say Monday you return. How, what's the plan for resolving the academic calendar situation? Um, this one, the various academic boards will have to convene a meeting for us to look at it because uh, mm -hmm. this is the fifth week of the strike action, so yeah. meaning that time is lost. As I indicated to you earlier on, the first two weeks of the semester mostly are used for registration yes. and orientation. Yeah. So that's one definitely. Teaching wouldn't have been affected, mm. but the remaining three weeks definitely with my experience working in the university over the years will have to be adjusted yeah. to accommodate those two to three weeks that have been lost so mm. that one definitely there's going to be something done yeah. and i expect the various academic boards to convene and then have a bite at this All right. thank you so much prof thank you prof Thank you. We are really your appreciate time. your time this morning. Thank and you. And all the best with yeah. the continued negotiations. Yeah. We hope okay. that this Thank is resolved soon. <laughs> all right. Thank all you. Right. So that, uh, that was Professor Nunu, the um, president of UTAG, yes. giving us an update mm. and uh, his thoughts on the latest in this saga, the injunction um, that has been placed by the court mm. on their strike. And they have to go back to the negotiation table yeah. with the National Labor Commission mm. to hopefully resolve this issue. So we'll take a quick break. When we come back, <laughs> Breakfast Daily will continue. Yeah. All right, welcome back. This is Breakfast Daily. The hashtag is Breakfast Daily on all social media platforms. The WhatsApp line is 0550-585832. And we've been talking UTAG. We've been talking strike. We've been talking the court order by the 
um, court to the um, Utah strikers to <laughs> to you know uh, pull back from the strike, go back to the classroom whilst negotiations go on. It's a tough situation for the members of Utah because they say we've been here before, we've seen all this before. You know, government has shown bad faith in you know in all of this and so we're digging our heels in but now they need to review what it is that the court has said um advise themselves pay their legal teams you know um, review of what the court has said and then decide what it is that they will do next well we want to find out from uh, the university of energy and natural resources what's going on there as well our colleague michael saponi fum is on phone uh, for us to find out. Michael, good morning. Hi, good morning, Taku. How are you doing this morning? Great, I'm doing very well. Good, 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 good. How's the uni like this morning? Uh, currently, I'm at the Jet Farm Hotel at the University of Energy and Natural Resources in Sinyani. Okay. Uh, the place is very calm. I have few students around to engage with them to find the opinion on the ruling today. Uh, yesterday, calling on the electors uh, to come back to the lecture theaters to continue academic work. Uh, mm -hmm. Have students in here. I would like to engage you. Uh, please, your name, Michael. Michael Dwabi. Michael Dwabi. Uh, which level are you? Level one. Uh, which program? Biological science. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, called the court ruled that uh, your lecture should come back to the lecture theaters to continue academic work. What is your take on it? Uh, yes, we, we are all waiting for the government, the, the court, to give a ruling on the strike. But we heard the court with an injunction on the to stop the strike. So finally, we have some happy news on board. We are bringing the next to come back to that, that teaching of the court now. Yeah, students are kind of frustrated. So I was even thinking of going home. I was thinking of going home, but the message in which to be that the lecture should stop the strike. I'm very happy. I'm very happy they are they have decided to call the strike for now. So now we are hoping for the day. How has it affected you as a first year student? Oh okay. <laughs> it has affected me very much because I think I came to go on January fifteen. Uh, January 15, then it's been like one month now with no ongoing lecture. Sometimes you just wake up in the morning, you take your bath, and you have nowhere to go. You just be walking around. So, in order to show that boredom, I asked some of my seniors or some of their level 100 slides so that I can start learning something. But even with those slides, I'm not even sure they are the right thing to learn for now, but the lectures are the right ones to show us what the good thing to learn. So it has affected us a lot. And also in our experiences, like, we are just there is no lectures on the so we just spend money. Just spend money. Meanwhile, if we are the house, like all this money we have been spending, it could be used for something better. Yeah, thank you very much, Michael. I could call half another. Mm. And level uh, 100 students here. Uh, please, what's your name? Senior Hassan Hanna Habiba. Habiba. Uh, which program? Nelson. Nelson. <coughs> yesterday you heard the news. What is your take on it? Okay, yesterday we were all expecting the surprise. After everything, the court ordered a mutual to call off the child. But after that, we didn't hear anything from the state. We are hoping that they listen to what the court is saying and come back to the classroom because we are with the students one day. Okay, thank you. I uh, so have uh, the vice president of the SIC okay. of uh, University of Energy and Natural Resources. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, your name? I'm Adam Palmet. Uh, Adam, what should be the ruling? As a vice what is your people? Um, I must say it, it's one of the best rulings. Um, because I remember um, last week we joined with the Minister of Labor and also the Minister of Education. 
where we made them know that we just realized that the government has been very silent on this strike issue. And that is where we say to us clearly, that is the Labour Minister, uh, we say that to us clearly that we have not been silent, but rather we are just calling on, we start to get call on the strike so that they can meet on the negotiation table. Because we made it known to us that it's a law that there is a law that when a union is on industrial action, it cannot meet government for negotiation. And when the if we start to is not willing to call off this right so that it can meet government for negotiation. We for call to place an injunction on this case so that it will come back to class. It's a very nice decision which we hope that if the government has given this directive so I think court has given this directive. Now, Utah will meet government and it will yield a positive result. Conclusion, these are a few views from mm. the Council of Inventor of Energy and Natural Resources in Finale. All right. Well, Michael, we really appreciate it. Um, we've, we, we spoke with uh, Professor Solomon Nunumu, who is the, um, uh, the national president of Utah, and uh, they are waiting uh, for later this morning uh, for some meetings that they will have uh, to review what the court order actually says uh, when they receive the hard copies. And so hopefully there's going to be some resolution to this matter and uh, all the students can get back, you know, to regular academic um, calendar. So hopefully. Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you very much. for Thank that. you very much, Michael. All right. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it's tough. It's tough. It is um, I, I can imagine those who say are from Accra and are at the University of, you know, uh, you know. Energy and Natural Resources. You don't know you're going home. Just like that. No. You, <laughs> you know, can't just like, get up and go home. No. It's quite a, I mean, what, a nine-hour trip, it's, it's a, you know. So trip. you can't just get up and say you're going home kind of thing so you sit there and then like this one of the students was saying it becomes an expensive venture of course you of know course. because and it's not as if you know it, you could say oh all right let me go and find a job that i can do temporarily yeah. while i wait yeah but but the thing is you don't even know when when it you is can that say, you're oh you've got to come back to class yeah. so it makes yeah. it difficult for you to even you say, say you, okay yeah. let me find something mm, i can do in the mm, meantime mm, you know yeah. it's not like you can decide oh, okay i'm going to take a gap here yeah or let me find a job i can do for two or three yeah. months or six months yeah. it's, puts them in a very difficult situation and for parents or people who are supporting mm. or funding their education you cannot imagine the stress the strain the we, worry uh, yeah yeah i know i know it's, uh, this this week is going to be very telling i mean from yeah. now to the 22nd yeah. what what transpires yeah. whatever transpires and I, i'd be interested to hear what comes of UTAG's review mm, of, of the, the court court's order? order. Okay. You know, because as Professor Nudu mm. said, they have to review it, mm -hmm. see whether they are in agreement <laughs> with that before <laughs> they decide <laughs> to go back no, to class. I, I, I think what they're probably looking for is maybe if there are if there are leeways, you know, or loopholes through which they can, because the court order is a court order. Yes. You know, and if you're in breach of the court you have, order, you have to you, abide you, by it. Be, uh -huh. So I think that's what probably what they want to see because they've heard. But yes. now let's get the actual document. Yes. Let's review it. Let's see if there's any way around this. If there's no way around it, then we just go back to the, classroom, back to the classroom and, and continue then, yes. negotiations until we get what yeah. we're asking for. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, hopefully at some point we can also hear from a government actor to explain what the issue really is mm. as to why they can't fulfill that obligation. Because as Prof said, just do what you promised to do in 20 or restore what was agreed upon yeah. in 2013 yeah. we'll work with that while you try to come up to speed with the more recent research that you've done mm. and and try to improve our conditions but if you can't even implement something that was decided almost a decade ago <laughs> we can how can we trust that we can continue uh, working and you'll do good by us you'll yeah, do right by us yeah we no we're yeah. gonna we'll stop but you see i i heard um i think it was was it el ankara of the fair, yes, fair, fair wages. wages and service commission you were saying that the you're saying that the the market premium, premium. The, the, that they do it's the it's their discretion that's what he's yes, saying. Uh, uh -huh. So but it's not like we are doing it so that we, you, we will implement it for you. We are doing it so we can check one or two things. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> <laughs> but if we are, if, I mean, because it's I, not the instance. It's not the instance of you that they 
conduct the market. Uh, no, know, no. They, they, they look up, you know, they yeah. do their research, yes. they do surveys uh -huh. to see what is the competitive rate yeah. to give our lecturers yeah. to, to incentivize yes. them, to, to add value to yes. what they do, yes. because what they do is valuable. Mm. You know, these are people, respected academics, yes. you know, yes, exactly. who are renowned yeah. globally, globally, you know, yeah. a lot of them. So mm -hmm. we want to compensate them yeah. in a way that's commensurate with their experience, yeah. their, their professionalism. So, I mean... For Al to say, it's almost, <laughs> come on, Al. Al, no, but, but no, but no, but it, that's a position of the fair, fair wages and salaries commission. That would be their position, yeah, because it behooves them yeah. to be, you know, to be in a good light or to to, <laughs> <laughs> to do things that favor them. But at the same time, yeah. you know, our, our lecturers are saying, look, we've been patient enough. Mm. Fair wages, NLC, yeah. everyone who's supposed to make this happen for us. Do it, or well, else we're not going back to the classroom. Well, as the name says, it's fair <laughs> wages. So the lecturers are asking for fair wages. Yeah. We have a couple of messages here. Yeah. Bismarck from earlier on uh, yes. he says, um, I don't agree with Andre's quote. I think he's... He's still he, back he, No, no, no. He, he, he didn't agree. <laughs> he, didn't make, he didn't make any mention about the quote. He said he just loved the show. You know, so when okay. we started talking about the quote again... Oh, he thought uh, we were talking about him? No, no, no. no but there was no. another message. There was a different message. Yeah, there was uh -huh. a different BB, message. BB was like one uh -huh, was who explaining like, yeah. the quote. Uh -huh. okay. So All he's right. coming to back you up by saying that he doesn't agree with uh, the quote. Uh, okay, Bismarck. Yeah, and Thank he's you. also saying that he suggests that the lecturers should go back to the lecture halls. Well, oh. hopefully that will happen soon. Um, JJ Kadir says, yeah. good morning, tell a lady to cheer up. A <laughs> lady, Kokui, <laughs> cheer up. JJ Kadir says, cheer up. Arsenal will be much stronger to compete again <laughs> soon. This is just for you. Wow, thank yeah. you, JJ. Yeah, all right. <laughs> We're going to take a short break. Don't go anywhere. Breakfast Daily will continue with some exciting conversations.